To understand how jam-ups can occur on the Internet, it's necessary to know something about how the system works. Most people connect to the net with a simple telephone call. The modem inside the computer dials a local telephone number. That's where the first slowdown can occur. Calls to the Internet are becoming a serious burden on the local telephone network. Jeffrey Waldhutter is the director of research and development for 9X, which provides local phone service for much of the northeastern U.S. He says the phone system was designed to handle only fairly brief conversations. It was based on the fact that uh, typical calls would be for four or five minutes for voice, uh, and that um, there would be so many calls a day, so we could take advantage of concentration, uh, assuming that not everybody would pick up the telephone at the same time and make a call. But internet telephone calls can often last for hours. They tie up the lines, and soon everybody starts getting all circuits are busy messages. Sometimes they can't even get a dial tone. If the call gets through, it's connected to another computer called a server at an internet service provider, often abbreviated as ISP. Servers are computers that handle lots of calls simultaneously. A bottleneck can occur here because many ISPs just don't have enough servers to keep up with demand. And since many ISPs now offer unlimited access for about $20 a month, users have no incentive to ever hang up. Tim Jackson runs a large ISP in Massachusetts called TIAC, the Internet Access Company. Well, the experiences that we've been having with the growth in the industry has been phenomenal. It's been about 8.5% per month. And per it, month? Uh, per month, yes. How do you keep up with that? Well, <laughs> you learn to be, it, it, it's sort of like changing a tire on a car that's going 60 miles an hour. At first, it's very difficult to sort of get into the swing of things and to be able to uh, learn how to do things at that kind of high speed. But after a while, you become acclimated to it. Jackson's office is in an almost continuous state of construction as more phone lines are added and more space is made for additional servers. But Jackson admits that smaller ISPs aren't always keeping ahead of demand. You have to buy sufficient machinery in order to do the job. A lot of internet providers are out there running their businesses on personal computers that you can buy at places like CompUSA. And you still have the garage shop mentality out there. Um, they're going to basically be weaned out over the next two or three years. The phone call next travels through the server to what's called the backbone of the Internet. It's composed of very powerful computers interconnected by high-capacity fiber optic cables, which pass the traffic to and from millions of computers all over the world. The backbone is maintained by a number of large companies, including long-distance phone companies like AT&T and MCI. Surf says so far they've been able to keep up with the demand. This, historically, we have driven the Internet to its limits made it uh, uh, almost to the point of unusability and forced ourselves to increase its capacity. This is a good problem to have. You know, I'm glad to have people forcing us to find new ways to increase the capacity of the net. But the backbone hasn't been completely free of problems. Case in point, the website called Politics Now, operated by the Washington Post, ABC News, and the National Journal. On election night last November, part of the backbone failed and cut off millions of people who were trying to look at election returns at the site. Evans Witt runs Politics Now. It was literally one of the big pipes, one of the big internet pipes, uh, which should be filled with nothing but pure, clean digital data. It had noise on it because some of the equipment was having a problem. It's a very hard problem to diagnose. When they did figure out the problem, they s shut that channel down. And because the Internet is designed to handle shutdowns such as that, the Internet picked up the capacity, and new unit brought up some backup facilities to handle the load. When a call successfully traverses the backbone, it finally reaches the server that contains the information being sought. That's the last potential choke point. Just like the first server at the ISP, too many requests for data can cause an overload. The server may stop responding to new requests which is probably what happened to the class at Cybersmith. 